Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I know I don't usually do a cooking thing on my sh on my channel here. I'm usually all about comic books and cartoons and playing Magic the Gathering. But uh, I was about to start making a, a delicious uh, chili for my family and I thought, you know what? Why not make a video? So here we are. Uh, I'm just about to get things started. I've got the ingredients on the counter here. I'm going to do all the prep work. I won't make you watch me cut up stuff and possibly myself. And uh, then we'll start uh, with the actual making of the food. So I'm just cutting up the onion here. Nothing too fancy schmancy. Slice up some, some some of these mushrooms here. Now I have children who don't like mushrooms, so I make the mushrooms really small, so they don't notice them as much. So I'm going to adjust my camera here just a little bit so you can see the frying pan. Okay, here we go. So put a little canola oil. I'm going to add some chili powder. A little bit of seasoning salt. A little bit of table salt. And we're going to grab some pepper. Toss that in there. A little bit of chili flake.
my stirring implement. We're gonna put some heat on. Um, I'm using a wok because I like the uh, way this pan takes so many vegetables. Uh, and I can keep them going nice and quick. I'm gonna do the mushrooms and the onions first. Because I'd like to get them both golden brown. So I'm just gonna pour them in, let them fry up. And while that's going on, I'm going to mince up my peppers and my carrots. And you're probably thinking, why is he adding carrots to a chili? Uh, I put them in for a little bit of extra crunch. Uh, my family seems to like it. Everybody's got their own recipe on how to make chili. This is just a thing I've added recently to mine. Uh, very recently, I mean, I've made it twice with this and both times people have said they enjoyed them. So I never would have thought to put carrots in personally, but it has now become a thing. So those are gonna start frying up. Excuse the noise. Just slice them up like this here. These are going to go into the slow cooker, and by the time everything is cooked, uh, the carrots will be nice and soft, and they're going to just absorb a bunch of the flavor from the rest of the chili. Um, so they're not they're not going to have that carrot taste. They're going to taste like uh, all of the spices and all of the onion and everything else. Uh, I mean, you can. It's, chili is one of those things where everybody sort of has their own recipe. Um, I mean, they have the basic components, right? You get the beans, typically, some people put beans in some bones, some, you know, you get ground beef, ground chicken, ground turkey, whatever. Uh, I've actually made a chili once with, uh, ground moose, which was really delicious. Uh, moose is a very lean meat, um, but what I did is I had some ground moose, and I cooked it actually in root here. And root beer really, the sweetness of root beer really added to the flavor of the meat. Um, so maybe try a variety of things. I've also made a dish, um, I can't recall the name of it off the top of my head, but uh, it's basically a chili, but inside the chili, you add raisins and apples. Uh, it's a dish my wife introduced me to. Uh, and you wouldn't think at first, you know, apples and raisins uh, with ground beef, but I'll tell you what, it's pretty tasty. I think it's a little bit of that sweetness from the uh, raisins. <coughs> Onions are cooking, so of course it's messing up with the air in here. It's gonna make me cry. I'm gonna give these a quick mix. Get some of that spice on the onion, get some of that spice going onto the mushrooms. See here, I'm just mixing it around the wok a bit. I'm gonna let these cook for a while. I really want to have the mushrooms fried up nicely in here and I want the onions to be you know also gold you know now I realize I'm throwing this off to a slow cooker and I could have just thrown the raw ingredients right into the cooker but to me uh, doing it this way adds a lot of flavor to the dish um, and so this is just the way I prefer to do it Again, you know, you don't have to take this step. This is an extra step. I also pre-cooked the, the beef, which is again going into a slow cooker. And again, could just go in as it is. Um, but I just like to, well, one, I like to know it's cooked. Uh, I've had food poison once before. It sucked. I don't want to have it ever again. Uh, so I'm overly cautious when it comes to my cooking. Now, while this is still continuing to cook, I'm going to turn the heat down just a little bit. Let that stuff fry but not burn. And I'm going to peel off my peppers here. So I like to use a variety of different peppers. I like to go red, green, orange, yellow. Um, you know, the more colors in the, in the bowl, the better. Um, I find each pepper tastes very similar, but they do have a little bit of a distinction to them. Um, you know, the yellows and the greens. Uh, are a little bit different, I think, from the reds. Um, overall, I think you can get a variety of peppers into your, your food. Uh, I think that's great. 
Um, they're not hot at all. Um, my daughter does not enjoy hot food, so you're not going to see me adding in spices to the general bowl that everybody's going to eat from. But I do add spice afterwards for my own personal bowl of chili. And my, my son is a huge heat seeker, so he and I will add spice to ours. Uh, but I, again, I want to make a meal that my whole family can eat, so I make sure that I'm cooking the hair in mine. Let me know in the comments below how you like to make your chili. So comic book wise, I'm working on a number of projects right now. I'm very excited about that. Um, during the pandemic, I haven't been working, so I've been working on just art. And uh, it's kind of exciting because it's probably the most creative I've been in the last while um, because with uh, not being able to see people, not being able to do conventions, uh, none of those distractions, which I mean I do love, love going to comic conventions, I love to meet people, I love hanging out with my contemporaries, I love to see what's new and exciting in the world of comics and cosplay and art in general and just really just people. But we gotta get through this thing first, so sacrifices have to be made. But on the upside, this year, in 2021, uh, my writer, Carson, who I work, I've been working with for 10 years now, just about, uh, we have three books coming out from a couple of different publishers, and uh, I'll be able to announce those soon on the channel. So you'll be looking for that. Uh, I've also been working on some comic book projects. Um, for those that know, I've also done a number of strips for the newsprint uh, called of the Laura Man. Uh, I'm actually so far ahead on that strip, I'm almost a year ahead. Um, so I'm gonna try and stay far ahead on it because it only releases every couple of weeks. And uh, Jeff was able to get me some scripts in very early on before the pandemic actually sat in. And because I knew I had a bunch of book projects coming up, I knew that my time was going to be really limited because I was working full time at the time. And uh, so it was only so many hours in the day. I knew that something was going to have to either go, or I was going to have to make changes in how I was working on things, and so Jeff was kind enough to give me a whole bunch of scripts for Aura Man, and I knocked a whole bunch out, and now we're sitting on a stack of comic cartoons that are ready to roll, which is grand. And on top of that, I illustrated another Iggy Idiot Caveman graphic novel, four complete issues, 150 new pages of art, which I think are really funny. And then I wrote a screenplay for Egg, and then I wrote a children's book for Egg. So I'm looking for publishers for those two things. Um, but yeah, I haven't been sitting on my butt. I've been working away. And on top of that, I've been working on Jason of New York City. Now, anybody that's been following me for a while, if you remember, the Jason of New York City comic book is actually where I got my start. Uh, and then I ended up doing a whole bunch of other stuff and not being able to really work on that, that book. Which is really disappointing to me because that's that's kind of my baby. That's where my heart is. Um, so <clears throat> to be able to return to that book has been just awesome. Um, I've re basically rewrote the story from the start. I found on rereading the work I had done 
at the very beginning of the story, it gets a little convoluted. Now you see a bunch of these superhero characters, and they're not really necessary for the telling of the story of Jason. And I kind of want to do something with them separately on their own. So when I rewrote Based on New York City, I only kept in the elements that I felt were really necessary. So I've taken out the superhero -y stuff and made it more about what he really is, and that's a monster fighter. So I'm excited for you to see that. Issue 1 is completely done. It's 48 pages. Uh, it tells the origin of Jason from Jason in New York City, right back from ancient Greece all the way up until his arrival in Manhattan. I'm working on issue 2 right now. And I've also illustrated a couple of future issues because the stories grabbed my attention. And I'm one of those people who, once the story gets in there, kind of tough to get rid of it. So I go with it. If you follow my Instagram, you'll see a couple of pictures on there that are kind of from the future stuff. Uh, I had Jason fight a Wendigo in a future issue, which turned out really well, and I'm excited about that. That whole issue's done. And then I send him to other places. I send him to Russia, where he gets into all kinds of trouble. And that book is almost done. So, like, let me know in the comments below, what are you looking forward to from 2021? What are you guys looking forward to? Now we've got this vaccine going around. Maybe we're going to return to a bit of a normal life here in the next while. What are you most excited about? What's What's got you excited? I can tell you I'm excited for the return of conventions because oh, I really just need those people. You know, I just need to get out there and see some people. So while this part is finishing up, I'm going to prepare the beef. Which is going to go into the wok as well. You free fry. And we take these ingredients and they're going to go into the slow cooker. And to go along with them, I'm adding in chickpeas. Uh, I'm also adding in black beans dark red kidney beans and I'm putting in some diced tomatoes to get a little bit of tang I know I know I know I'm putting in all these things that you guys probably don't put into yours but uh, yeah it's kind of a nice thing about cooking it's it's creating they're all creating we're marching to our own drums So I just want to let this in here for a little bit longer. I want my peppers to get a little more cooked, a little more crispy, you know, get a bit of that. Oh, those onions look great. These onions look really great. Not sure how they're translating visually on the camera, but these look really good. You can use a frying pan. Like I said, I like to use a wok. Um, that's just a personal preference. And I think these are about ready to come off. So I'm just going to swap this out.
Now I'm not cooking all of this hamburger for the chili. I'm gonna make a spaghetti sauce later on. So I'm gonna save the rest of this for that. Now I gotta season this up. So we're gonna add in some chili powder. I like to put in a little bit of seasoning salt. Let's see a little bit of the uh, oh. <laughs> Sorry about that, that was my fridge door. I put a little bit of this right in. A little chili garlic. So, I just want to break up these chunks of beef. And I'm going to leave that to cook. I'm going to plate to put this on because I can't put that on the stove top. Put this away. Now this beef is going to cook fairly quickly. This wok does a wonderful job. And these high sides help cook even the stuff that's resting a little higher up. They transfer the heat really nicely. And so once I've got the beef cooked, I will drain it. That's where these other, I keep the cans that the uh, beans were in just for that purpose. So I don't want to put that down the sink. So I've got the salt cooker pretty much set up and ready to roll. I'm going to set my cooking time. I'm going to go with six hours. Okay, so beef is cooking here. Look at that, it's getting golden brown. It's really good. I've also been playing a ton of magic lately with the pandemic going on, I haven't been doing any in-person magic, so I am looking very forward to returning to paper games. Uh, but I have been on Magic Online a lot. Uh, my username is Tunigan. So if you see me on there, say hi and let's play a game. Uh, I'm always in the Commander's casual area there, playing casual magic. Um, 
I have a couple of decks I'm quite proud of that I've created this year that are doing well. And for me, doing well isn't necessarily winning a game. It's just, does it play well? Am I having fun playing it? Does everybody else get kind of a kick out of it? And how often do I get asked, what are you playing? Those are the things I look for when I'm playing some magic. Is one of my decks that I'm playing is a, a rather odd build. It's a Golos Charbelcher deck where I don't play any lands except for one. And my goal is to find a Charbelcher and end the game. And so far, it's done that a few times. If you check my channel, you'll see the video that I put together uh, with the deck itself. And I've got, a, I'll put up another game or two yet that I've played with it. I've been playing it quite a bit because it is a funny build and it's a fun deck. And I've had a lot of people ask, you know, why <laughs> when I play it. And uh, I get that, it's, it's odd. And it's very vulnerable to, to mass artifact removal and things of that nature but uh you know what this it's a glass can in life man it's a risky run i'm also playing a mono black zombies deck because zombies were the first creatures i played with when i started playing magic that was my introduction to the game i had friends that have been playing for a long time they invited me to start playing with them and they hooked me up with a zombie deck right off the bat. And it wasn't a good deck. It didn't win a lot of games, but it was fun and I enjoyed the mechanic. And so I just recently rebuilt it in an EDH form. And I'm using uh, Macalus, the Unhallowed as my commander. And I like him because when my creatures die, they come back on their own with persist counters on them. And uh, when you compare that up with effects where your opponents are going to lose life because you've lost your creature, or they've lost a creature, and you gain life that way, well, it makes the game kind of interesting. I'm going to add a little bit more seasoning because I don't see a lot of it left. Sometimes that happens, it just sort of cooks out. Now, this should be. A delicious chili. Alright, I think the beef is just about finished. You can see all of the fat, you know, and this is a lean beef, so I'm going to drain all of that out. It's not going in my chili like that. I don't want my chili to get all of that grease in it. Come on, man, I didn't make a beautiful chili to ruin it with grease. That's not what I do. Okay. So I've got a can from the prep here. And I'm going to pour the grease into it. So this is basically, this is it. This is the crock pot. I'm going I'm to do a stir here. I mix all of my ingredients together. You can see I've got red beans. We've got all of the stuff we just cooked. Mix it all in. Now, sometimes I put in like a can of beer or a shot of whiskey or something into it because it'll cook out all of the alcohol and it just infuses the meat with a bunch of flavor, which is really nice. I've also used Dr. Pepper, I've used root beer. Uh, you know, again, the sugar really breaks down uh, the meat well, and uh, it helps add a bit of really cool flavor to the, to the meal overall. Um, you know, it makes a match, try out different things. Uh, this chili, as you can tell, it's not super spicy. Um, again, my, my youngest is not a spice fanatic, 
Um, so I will put spice on mine and my son's before we eat tonight. That's basically it, folks. Quick and easy, chili. It's going in the slow cooker. It's going to cook for, you know, five or six hours. And at the end, it should be good. Well, folks, I think that's it for this video here. Let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed the cooking uh, video. I know it's something different. It's not what I usually post. Um, hope you enjoyed it. And uh, also, uh, you'll be seeing me streaming more often on Twitch TV. Uh, wow, Samson's is my username there. If you want to go over there and give me a follow or a sub. Uh, I'm going to be playing World of Warcraft again. My son has convinced me to return to Azeroth. So you'll see me muddling my way through there and trying to figure out the new expansion. And I'm uh, not level six, next 60 yet. I'm almost there. Uh, I've only returned on Monday. So we'll see how that goes. And uh, let me know what you thought of the video. Let me know what you want to see from the channel in the future. Uh, I'm going to continue con posting content. Uh, I'm going to do more magic videos. Uh, you will see me I'm uh, making some more deck boxes. And uh, you're also going to see me doing some art. Uh, the reason I haven't been showing a lot of the art lately is I'm doing a lot of stuff that I can't share until the publisher says it's okay to do it. And so I've made some videos that I have sitting sort of backlogged that uh, I will share as soon as I can. Uh, so those will be going up on the channel soon as well. Uh, like, subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video, you try checking out some of my other stuff. I've got a video where I made a dollhouse with my daughter, uh, which, which was a lot of fun. Uh, lots of other things where I've done uh, customization of G.I. Joe vehicles and stuff like that. Uh, it's a real mixed bag on my channel. Uh, and if you just want to check out some magic videos, you can go ahead and take a look. I have a whole playlist of uh, the EDH videos I've been putting up. Uh, you will see a new one actually this week as well, because uh, I've got a video already done and edited and ready to go. And uh, we'll see you live streaming. Take care.